Okay, so hello everyone. Um, happy Thanksgiving uh, to all of you. Hope you're having a great day and, and a great uh, afternoon. So uh, welcome to our uh, Horizon Weekly Insider. This is number 16. Um, so very, very excited to, to be here today. Uh, please remember, as usual, that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Uh, also, please remember to ask your questions on the Menti while uh, this is happening so we can have a good Q&A session at the end. Let's uh, start with the updates from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to start. Sure. Thank you, Angie. Happy Thanksgiving for uh, those uh, of you who are celebrating it. Uh, this is Luca from the Milan office, kicking it off with uh, engineering updates. So, as it was uh, scheduled uh, this week, uh, we performed uh, sorry, I, uh, I'm getting some echo. Okay, thanks. Uh, we performed a, a number of uh, code review sessions for the development progress on uh, Sidechain Beta that was uh, done last week. And in particular, we have reviewed and accepted uh, the second part of uh, Epoch uh, developments. Uh, being even more specific, what we have reviewed and accepted was the creation of a new withdrawal request box, the modification of a regular transaction to support the withdrawal request box, and also the modification of sidechain state to support processing and storing withdrawals. Uh, actually, even more than that, uh, I would say overall the delivery on the epoch side is moving on very well. Speaking about consensus, which is a uh, the other, let me say, big component of Sidechain Beta. Um, we are proceeding on this front as well. Uh, we have uh, all the granular tasks related to this macro activity and resources working on them already. Uh, we now also have resources working on uh, the Explorer. As uh, we know, the current Explorer has uh, some uh, issues that need to, to be addressed and uh, it needs to be updated too. So this is key not only from main chain perspective, but also important from a sidechain perspective, as uh, also sidechain will need to have uh, an explorer. Therefore, we have identified some uh, activities to be performed, like uh, the analysis of the existing uh, open points, uh, the analysis of uh, updates, uh, update impacts for main chain explorer, uh, the update of the main chain explorer version, and even the update of the readme for uh, setup. Then uh, what will follow is the analysis for changes needed to integrate sidechains and the final integration of sidechain to the block explorer. Okay, that was uh, uh, it. Uh, but uh, let me uh, add one final comment. Uh, um, apart from the development activities, I also wanted to give visibility on this matter. Basically, on the flip side rankings, we are uh, we now have a very high score. We we are already a S project under the development category, as the score jumped above 900. So only two or three projects, if I remember well, have a higher score with Ethereum, which is 973, and EOS 929. But we are right after them, and overall our score is uh, also growing. I refer to the total score. Today, it's, uh, we have a total score of 859. So I think this is really remarkable. That's it from our side. And I would pass it uh, back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Awesome news. OK, next one is Chronic on the infrastructure side. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, no big updates on the infrastructure side. Uh, we are continuing with code review and testing of the next uh, tracking server release. And um, uh, we imported the production database into our test net uh, testing cluster and uh, we'll do some payment generation dry runs. Um, and the deployment is still um, scheduled for next week. Uh, we are planning um, not this weekend, but the weekend after to uh, deploy everything into production. And um, we will update uh, a subset of servers in the middle of the week just to make sure that uh, everything really runs as expected. And that's it. Thank you, Kranik. Um, Alan, would you? No, Alan, it's not uh, here. Okay, so next one is Gustavo on the UX side. 
Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. So today we have Nathan to give us the help desk update. Please, Nathan. Hey everyone, the uh, metrics for the service desk are posted in the chat. Uh, summary of the help desk is we're still getting a lot of activity from uh, faucet activity from uh, people needing help with their accounts and a lot of new blockchain users in general where Horizon is their first experience in blockchain needing help getting like their new wallet set up. Uh, so that's very cor highly correlated with the success of the faucet. That's all. Thanks, Nathan. On this week, we've been focusing on the Sphere mobile testing. We are also working on a campaign for the faucet for the upcoming holidays, and uh, we are tackling some of the Sphere desktop issues when it comes to performance. And that's all on our part. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Gustavo. Next one is Rowan on the business development side. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I've swapped microphones, so I kind of hope it's working okay. Can someone clarify they can hear me? It is. Perfect. Alrighty, so I have kind of two main missions this week. The first mission is more of a follow-up on the conversations I was having previously with, excuse me, with a variety of different custody partners or potential custody providers. Uh, really, really important at the moment uh, as we're seeing larger institutions and organizations joining in the ecosystem. So it's very, very important that we give them uh, easy options for uh, storing funds safely and securely. So I'm following up on a variety of conversations there and hope to have some good news to share in the next few days. Um, the second mission is around mining. Uh, and on that front, there's a little bit of uh, good news that came out just earlier today. Uh, the largest pool for Equihash Zen at the moment is F2 Pool, a very large uh, Asian-based mining pool. They've just launched a profit switching algorithm specifically for Zek and Zen. Uh, so that's really good news for us because it's going to give us uh, a bunch more exposure to large Zek miners, of which there are many. Um, so it's a great way of getting Horizon out into the eyes of some new people. Uh, on the, the mining front, what I'm actually trying to do at the moment is reach out to as many large Zen miners as I possibly can. Now, typically, the large Zen miners are probably people that don't really want to be uh, publicly identified. So if you are listening to this and you are a large Zen miner, I'd very much be interested in having a conversation with you, and that can be in confidence if required. Um, and yeah, I'll continue on that front. At the moment, I'm speaking to three of the largest pools. So I'm speaking to F2 Pool. I'm speaking to mining pool hub and i'm speaking to or at least have reached out to luck pool uh, just earlier today so that's the kind of avenue i'm trying to go down on that front and that's it for me um no massive updates on exchanges or anything of that nature uh vano if you want to jump in with an update please feel free to do so hello everyone Vano speaking from georgia so from my side, the only public update I have is that our podcast has been approved on Pandora, which is only open for USA and uh, US customers now have the possibility to listen to our podcast on that platform too. That's all from me. Thanks. Ivano, that's really good news. How do we upload onto Pandora? Is it through the same mass uploading program that you use? Yes, it's uh, through Lipsyn platform. They are pushing it through their platform to Pandora, actually. That's amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so next one are you, uh, Jonathan. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, well, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mano. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, please use the Menti code that we posted in Discord. Uh, so a couple updates from the marketing side. Uh, so holidays are obviously coming up, so we're working on a theme for the faucet. Uh, it looks amazing, as I mentioned on our Monday call. It looks super, super sleek, super holidayized, looks great. Uh, we already have the desktop version, and uh, now we're just working on the mobile version. We're looking to release on uh, the 1st of December, so stay tuned for that. Um, we are also working with uh, Chronic and Alan and Mac on a tracking server update blog. So uh, before anything changes, there'll be a blog outlining exactly what will be changed uh, so that everybody has uh, transparency and an idea of what's happening. Uh, Mac has been doing a great job of trying to add USD to the Horizon Store, and we think we've identified a fix. So hopefully that will be up uh, before December 1st. 
Uh, and lastly, from uh, lastly for me is uh, we're going, we're now working on uh, opening up to the community to all node operators a way to engage with the community. So we'll be releasing a blog in the next uh, week or two and uh, giving some guidelines on how any node operator in the community can offer, if they would like to, some kind of incentive for Horizon community members to join, whether that's a percentage discount or one month free or anything like that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Really excited about that. And um, basically the reason we're doing it is because we've had massive response from the community that they like the idea of having some kind of discounted node hosting. So on, on that front, super excited. And Erica, did you have anything that you wanted to say today? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Uh, as you all know, we finished up our node hosting giveaway. We contacted all of the announcers early this week, or all of the winners early this week, and announced it on Tuesday. Um, in addition, we're currently starting a new partner promotion where we feature one new partner of ours each week. Um, currently, we're going to try a few different things to see what clicks best with our audience, um, like sharing information about partner platform updates, uh, sharing select giveaways, uh, retweeting some of their posts, or just tweeting something original but about our partners. Um, ultimately, the benefits to this are that it improves relationships with our current partners, which can improve how potential partners also feel about us. Um, so we'll be sending out the second one ever this week. I'm currently looking at a couple of our partners that are running some giveaways and looking into those. So you should see that later today. Thanks. Thank you, Erica and Jonathan. OK, next one is Rosario with Product and Engineering. Hi, guys, and happy Thanksgiving. So uh, with the end of the year approaching, I'd like to refine our plans for 2020. So I'm starting an effort to prioritize our, at our projects for the upcoming year. And of course, we have to match that with budget and see what's what, uh, where we can allocate resource and also reduce the the frictions that we've had lately with uh, uh, resource contentions, uh, specifically on the UX projects and HD and Academy, and also with the uh, Sphere. Um, so, working on that. And then still um, working with the help desk team to gather additional data points uh, that will help inform our our products uh, later on. And that is it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add any updates? Yes, thank you. Um, great updates. Excellent progress across all um, all fronts, as, as we usually do. I just wanted to, it being Thanksgiving, give thanks for the wonderful and capable team that uh, I get to work with and we all get to work with, the outstanding community and the very supportive and outgoing worldwide community that we have. And finally, the opportunity to bring worldwide, private, decentralized money and applications to people in every country, every language, all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Rolf. And now for the final part, Rob. Thank you, Angie. And Rolf, my, my updates are going to sound like a downer after that amazing, uh, <laughs> amazing uh, commentary. Um, okay, guys, yeah, so on to some of the things that I'm working on and, and what I'm doing um, for the coming month, and prepping really for 2020. So first of all, happy Thanksgiving. And I love Luca's update. So basically, you guys know we started this year um, kind of in the doghouse with respect to FCAS, you know, the fundamental crypto asset score, uh, we were ranked in F. And I remember early on, we had this project from F to A. And, and we've done that, but we've done even better than that now. And at least uh, for our engineering work, we're now one of the top projects in the entire industry uh, with an S rating. Uh, so thank you, Luca, for that update. It, it's fantastic to know that there are only two or three other projects in the entire industry that have a better uh, engineering rating than us. 
Um, so that's awesome news. Now, as we're planning for this next year, uh, what we're doing is, you know, we always like to challenge ourselves and think, how can we do things better? How can we do more with less? And, you know, are we focusing on the right strategic objectives? So more to come on all of those fronts. But what one one project internally that that I'm thinking right now is let's take this opportunity to rethink um, our vision, our mission. What are we all about um, as an ecosystem? Uh, what are we trying to do uh, and how are we organized as, as at least this team within a broader ecosystem um, to accomplish the you know, vision and mission? And, and what I want to be more evident over the next year is I don't want just this team to be the only team building within the ecosystem. We need to really promote the ecosystem itself. Um, and it's easier to say than it is to do, particularly when we're in a resource constrained environment. But this is sort of some of the thinking that we're doing and some of the relationships that we're making uh, behind the scenes that will be more evident in the near future. Um, so, you know, to reiterate what I view uh, Horizon itself to be is a community startup, first and foremost. So things that go to support the community. Now, of course, technology is, you know, the, the backbone for what we do because we are building a community based on this decentralizing technology. We want to keep doing that. We want to keep being more effective with how we do that. And we want to make more opportunities for people to, you know, participate and enrich their lives by participating in the ecosystem. And by enrich their lives, I don't necessarily mean making money. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but by having other opportunities to communicate with people, to just join different communities and, and participate in something bigger than themselves. That's a really big part of what we're doing. Now, this is why for 2020, uh, there will be a huge focus on growth campaigns. So now we've built a, an absolutely fantastic foundation as a project, our fundamentals are you know through the roof. We, our network is huge in terms of nodes, but beyond that, on the BD stuff that Rowan and his team do, I mean, we have just the perfect infrastructure and the perfect backbone to really start uh, growing uh, fast now. Um, so that's why we're going to be focusing hard on growth campaigns. We're going to be putting together a whole, an independent growth team. It will be a composite mix of different functional areas that all support growth, uh, and will be headed by uh, basically you know, someone who's championing growth. Period. Um, so Jonathan is, has mentioned his, his goals of 1 million users, but, you know, in 2020, I think that that's a way underestimate. So we're about a quarter of that right now. I, I forecast we're going to hit 10 million. So that's the big challenge for us in 2020 is we need 10 million users within our community. And with the plans that we're going to be revealing in the near future, I, I believe that we're going to be able to hit that. So part of this, you know, thinking through our org structure is also, I, I believe it's, it's high time for us to put together an interim product team. I would say a full product team. And we have elements of our product team that have been operating thus far within our organization, uh, but we haven't really uh, resourced it the way that we should. And still we're in a resource constrained environment. You guys know that the price of Zen has recovered quite a bit from the all time lows, but it's still not where we need it to be to be expanding our team, unfortunately. But we have phenomenal talent in house and we're gonna be organizing this such that we're putting together at least an interim product team that that uh, will focus on perfection in our products. Um, so what this means is that we're going to, it'll be a mix of say engineering, UX, design support, support desk, marketing, and different elements that feed into a coherent product mix so that we know that what we're doing is actually satisfying user you know, preferences. And we're improving by actually looking at metrics for, you know, performance. And what are the things that aren't working very well? And can we improve that? And really what I want for 2020 is a focus on, on perfection, excellence. Uh, and, and that's something that, again, will be forthcoming in, in more details. Now, on to some really good news. Um, and I'm not going to say exactly specifics. And let me make this clear. One of our ecosystem partners, Horizon Labs, uh, has just raised another, another uh, funding round. So they've put... They've raised more capital to build products uh, within the Horizon ecosystem. And the really good news from this is uh, the largest investment. And we'll, you know, Horizon Labs will uh, be announcing you know, more details as, you know, as uh, the news is ready. But the largest investor is a very large uh, company within a Latin American market. And they're, they're basically making a, a very big strategic commitment into the Horizon ecosystem through Horizon Labs. Um, so I think this is extremely good news for us. And I'm sorry to be a little vague on it, um, but I just want to put that out there to say that we have some very strong support out there 
uh, even though it, you know, if you just look at the market, it may look like we're, we're just kind of in that bear cycle. Um, the project itself is growing significantly, constantly improving, and we're raising more capital within ecosystem partners to build within the ecosystem. Um, and the last bit of good news, there is uh, a crypto hedge fund called Delta Core Capital based out of Austin that has uh, formally made its, its first uh, first bet into Zen. So uh, really happy about that. We're starting to see some funds within the industry take notice of the project um, and start making public commitments. So so we'll also be doing some joint uh, joint promotions with Delta Core. And, you know, they're just extremely happy to support our our uh, ecosystem in general. And, uh, you know, I, I expect more uh, continued engagement with them and with others like them who come and recognize that we built something very high quality. So that's what I've got, guys. Why don't we close it here a little bit early and open to Q&A? Do we have uh, the mentee, uh, any mentee questions today? Or is it a pretty slow day with Thanksgiving? Hey, Rob. Yeah, we have a couple questions. Uh, okay, so the first one. What's the plan for 2020 when it comes to new exchange listings? Hmm, that's, that's a really good one. Actually, Rowan, you're on the line here. So do you want to take, I've got some thoughts, but I'm sure you put a lot more thought into it. So answering questions like that is pretty tricky because we can't really uh, talk about where we're targeting specifically, but obviously we want to get Zen into the biggest and the best and the most reputable and the most liquid exchanges physically possible. Uh, we have the right kind of backing and infrastructure in place now. We've got the right team working on it. So I think now that we've sorted out fundamentals, we're in a very, very strong position to have conversations with all of the biggest and best exchanges. So 2020 is going to be a busy year for us in BD, that's for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Rob, did you want to add to that? No, that's perfect. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so the next question is, is there translation for the newest white paper into Russian? Oh, that's a great question. I, I don't know the answer. Vano, uh, anything on your end for that? Since you um, no, we actually uh, do not have translation in Russian because uh, we no longer have, uh, I think, native Russian speaker in our team yet. But uh, I will ask uh, our community members in our Russian uh, Russian Telegram channel to help. So if someone lends me a hand, then we will translate it for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, well, we have a couple more questions. We still have seven minutes, so we could keep going. I think you like the next one. Where do I start if I want to jump into the coding blockchain speaking from a beginner point of view wow that's uh that's a great question actually <laughs> so this is the whole point of the horizon developer env environment hde that jonas has been uh spearheading so the point of this and, and it's not exactly ready yet is um we're trying to solve some issues with open source number one you know what do you what do you actually work on and do you have a support environment to work on it? So the first part of HDE is actually designed to help curate opportunities for new coders to come in uh, and participate in the project. Uh, the second thing is, is on the compensation side and actually, you know, giving active bounties that reflect, you know, priorities and so forth. Um, so we're, we're not quite ready on that. So what I would recommend right now is to join our, um, our developer channels here at, the, at minimum on Discord. Um, check out our, our public repositories on GitHub. Um, so you can look at our, our open code bases. You can, you know, comment, you can log issues. Um, you can start playing with the technology, but maybe more importantly, from a beginner's perspective, actually start, um, talking to some of our engineers and some of the technical people within our community, um, you know, in, in our public channels. So I would start there. Awesome. Thank you. The next question is in Russian, but I Google translated it. So um, if it doesn't make complete sense, it's probably because Google Translate didn't do a good job. But it sounds like they're asking about side chains. And basically, they ask, in the case of a fiasco, what happens to the coins on the side chain? Mm, that's, that's an excellent question. And too bad Alberto is not online right here um, to answer it directly. But the uh, What's being built into our, our uh, cross-chain transfer protocol is actually 
uh, an emergency uh, mechanism so that if a chain were to be compromised, uh, users actually don't lose their funds. They actually have uh, an emergency withdrawal method. That actually is part of the architecture that's been considered because if we are going to have actual business use cases where people are committing real economic resources into a side chain, we need to make sure that you know we don't have chronic problems that you know blockchain projects have had in the past. For instance, it, it is unacceptable after getting a business client to, to try to explain to them what a 51% attack is and why they just lost their money because some you know majority of nodes uh, or you know, forgers on the, on that side chain were were compromised. So we are building protections into that, and there, there will be more details um, as we release software. And actually, we have another uh, very interesting uh, technical paper that will be released in the coming weeks on the, what's going to be included in the beta version of the sidechain system. Awesome. I, uh, one more question, if you're okay with it. I think you're going to really like this one, too. <laughs> of course. Um, how is Horizon's sidechain infrastructure different from the Lightning Network that runs on Bitcoin? Mm, okay, that, that, that's a, a fantastic question. And um, sorry, just scanning to see. Mauricio, do you want do you want to field that one, or you want me to to have at it? And uh, hi, Rob. Hi, everyone. I mean the 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 difference is that the Lightning Network is uh, ba- you know is based on 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 channels for payment channels, so it's much more limited. And our side chains is a, a complete model where we can code any kind of logic in that um, that blockchain is a complete blockchain that is completely in the hands of the developers who can. Um, you know, build the, the data that they want, the data structure that they want, the the logic that they want, and uh, with the with the plus that they can use Zen, so they can transfer Zen in, in there and they change that, and with some strong mechanisms uh, to that that will make that very robust. So we can they can be fully comfortable that the money is saved there and then can be retrieved. Awesome. Thank you, Mauricio. And hey, one, one point that's not, not quite related to that question, but I think a re- really important one that was raised to me during the week when, when someone was uh, looking at our uh, sidechain system, it, there was a eureka moment for this, this engineer when he realized we have, we have sort of, at least in some capacity, solved one of the big issues in the industry is in how do developers get, get paid? Right? How, how, how can you make um, incentive compatible system for developers to truly participate and really just go wild in building things in your ecosystem. And the, the, I, w- I would say the brilliance of Alberto's invention here is not just on the technology side, but on the incentive side, the economics and incentivizing. So anyone that launches a sidechain, uh, actually has a built in revenue model in launching that sidechain. So if the sidechain is anywhere close to successful, that sidechain uh, developer or company or, or entity that launched that sidechain uh, actually participates in the the uh, revenue streams across the sidechain. In particular, participates in uh, transaction fees within the sidechain, then across the sidechain to the main chain or sidechain to other sidechains in the future. Um, so it is something that's just very uh, well aligned to now add that next layer. So with, with Bitcoin miners benefited, um, you know, directly from from the protocol. Uh, with what we're doing and, and others have done is uh, node operators benefit from participating and building out the infrastructure. And now with the sidechain system, we've created a model where developers, engineers directly benefit from launching uh, sidechains. So any other questions, Jonathan? No, that's it. One of the things I'm noticing as I read these questions and reading, uh, listening to our bots and Facebook, we're getting more and more questions in different languages. So, I would love to take the lead in 2020 and finding a way for us as a company to quickly uh, create content in other languages. I, I think that we probably 4x the number of questions we get, in, um, especially from, from Russia. Uh, so I think that would be super important for our growth. Love it, Jonathan. Totally agree. Well, uh, guys, thank you very much for joining us here. I, I would say let's close this out because we're, we're hitting the closing time so it's been a great update and everyone thank you for joining for listening for participating 
uh, and let's continue to make this project a big success. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and we'll see you in a week.